Welcome back to a new tutorial, Benoit Farin for Ben Explorer. In this module, we are going to talk about preferences in Premiere. Premiere provides many, many ways to configure settings and optimize your editing experience. There are so many settings and we just won't be able to go through each of them, but I would like to cover those that I believe are the most important to us. And this is also a good way, I think, for you to know that these settings exist and that you can adjust them if needed. I already have Premiere running and I will open the project Preferences Overview from the tutorial files that you can download from my site. The link to the tutorial files can be found in the description section of this module. This is a very simple project. You could simply create a new project and insert a single video file. That's all we'll need. So from the start screen, I'll open project and then navigate to my desktop. And within the tutorial files under the projects folder, I'll open the project preferences overview. Premiere might ask you to convert the project to the version of Premiere you are running. Premiere will also ask you to relocate the media. If you need help on that, follow my episode Get Ready with the Tutorial Files. I explain the reasons for Premiere to request a conversion and for relocating your files. Premiere is now running and the project name is open. We can see its name here and we see that some media was imported to the project. First off, I'll just start by saying that Premiere gives us several types of settings. We will look at application settings. Those settings are applied globally and they are persistent. We will look at project settings. Those settings live with the project and only apply to a specific project. And we will look at sequence settings, which obviously apply to a sequence. So let's start by looking at the application settings. We also refer to them as general preferences. When a change is made to a general preferences setting, that change is persistent and applies globally inside of Premiere. Changes made to general settings apply to the project we are currently working on, as well as any new project, and they will remain when we close and reopen the application. To access the general preferences, go to Edit and choose the Preference options. If you are on the back, then go up to the Premiere Pro menu and select General Preferences. Several categories are listed here. Let's open the general category, for example. In here, we have access to some basic settings. For example, we can fine tune the way Premiere is launching and whether or not to show the start screen. We will go through this with an example later. So I'll click cancel for now. The project settings are project wide settings. Changes made to project settings will only affect the currently open project. When opening an existing project or creating a new one, the default settings will apply. To open the project settings, go to File, choose Project Settings, and notice we have two options, General and Scratch Disks. I'll select General. In the Project Settings dialog box, notice that the General tab is selected. If I had chosen the other option in the menu, the Scratch Disks tab would be open now and I can switch from here, obviously. In an earlier episode, when I showed you how to create a new project, we already went through the general settings and the scratch disk settings. This means that after a project has been created, we still have the ability to come back here and adjust the project settings if needed. And now let's look at the sequence settings. When we create a new sequence from File, New Sequence, the New Sequence Settings dialog is displayed here. In this dialog, we can define our editing mode, and doing so will affect the media that will drop in the sequence. If we drop a media in the sequence, and the media had different settings, then the rendering may not be smooth during playback, as the sequence settings and the media settings differ. This might be required if your media is of different resolutions, for instance, but in general, you will want the settings to match your media. 
Another method for creating a sequence is to drop a media either on an empty timeline or on this icon. Doing so, a new sequence will automatically be created based off the settings of the media we drop on the timeline and the settings will match. Let's do this then. Select this media, it can be any media by the way, and drop it on this icon. A new sequence is created. We can view and change the settings of this sequence. I'll make sure the sequence is selected. Notice the sequence is highlighted. Then I go to Sequence, Sequence Settings. The Sequence Settings dialog we saw previously shows up here. The settings in this dialog reflect the media settings in our timeline. I'll hit Cancel to close it. There are so many other ways to customize preferences in uh, Premiere. We will cover most of them in the next episode and throughout this course. For example, each panel has its own configuration settings. In the Source Monitor panel, for example, I can change the playback resolution along with several other settings that we will cover when we walk through the Program Monitor panel and the Source Monitor panel. In this overview, we found out that Premiere offers an endless number of options for customizing our editing experience. This is probably overwhelming at this point, but as we'll be using Premiere, it will make sense to customize the application and benefit from the various customization options. In the next episode, we will use and practice some of these settings and we will modify some of the default preferences.